This is uh, this drawing is a drawing about life and death. Uh, this is my a, a very very close friend of mine, Jock Anderson. I met him first day of art school, and Jock's I, I got to know his mom and dad very well too, and his mother and father are there, Doug and, and Gail, and um, they're Scotch Irish and. They adopted Jock, uh, and Jock, I think, probably has some Arab, Arab blood, and he has this kind of Moses, you know, this very dramatic uh, uh, appearance. But in this drawing, his mother had congestive heart failure, so she was dying really slowly, and it was just kind of awful. And she went blind for a year, and then her sight came back. And, and um, Again, in the narrative, she's kind of all wrapped up, and if you look closely, it's, she's really skin and bones, and, and this was one of the last times that she went out on the porch. So, with, with the two men who love this woman, and they're watching her disintegrate, it, emotionally, I wanted, with Jock, to show the anger and the frustration of having to watch her suffer. And with Doug, partly, and some, not really anger, but concern and, and, and love and um, uh, sadness and compassion. And when I was there, uh, Bridget, who, who I think was maybe three or four here, um, that's Jock's daughter, she came up to Grandma and, and she represents innocence. And children, to me, are truly innocent. And, and she doesn't have a clue that her grandmother's dying. And she came up and showed her something like a little flower or a rock. And uh, uh, obviously it's just this amazing moment for me to put into the, the drawing. And uh, when, I'm, when I decide on who I'm going to work with, I'm, I keep everything kind of open. I don't lock in a story. I don't come in and force people to, to uh, fit into my idea. I, I, I keep a fluid... Uh, uh, I have a basic idea, and I knew that the, the drawing was going to be about um, them losing Gail, and, and she died not too long after I started this drawing, or finished this drawing. And this piece had, if I can get life work, I get life work. So this piece, this piece um, had a fair amount of life work, because I was able to roll it up and drive out to Long Island. Uh, in this drawing, this is a, one of the New York drawings. This is a little bit upstate, not too far from Manhattan. And Danny, I, I knew Danny and his wife uh, before uh, kids, when they got married. And about, I want to say seven years ago, uh, his, his wife is one of the top pastry chefs in the country. She's kind of famous. And uh, Danny started having trouble where, where he started losing jobs. And, 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 but you couldn't, I never knew why. And, and, and uh, uh, couldn't hold a job. and there, different things that were happening um, um, and then over time it ends up that he's a chronic alcoholic and drinks from morning to night so it destroyed his, his marriage and um, yesterday I was at the, the Bellows Foundation talking and, and I was asking the students about to describe the drawing and what they see and they said well there's nothing on the walls and, um, um, and they said it looks like he's been being yelled at and uh, anyway, there is nothing on the walls. He, it's the, he moved out of the house. He had this beautiful, lovely wife, uh, beautiful house, two intelligent, pretty daughters, and uh, lost it all. And the daughter, so, so this is them visiting him in his depressing uh, garage apartment, uh, not too far from the house. But um, the other thing, the other narratives here, um, Emma and Kiara, Emma's the younger girl. I, let, I always let my models wear whatever they want. So uh, Kiara here is 14 and she put on a party dress and pulled back her hair and put on some pearls. And um, uh, she's kind of just at the verge of, of uh, becoming a woman. And the, her fathers are not going to be there for that in a way, emotionally and spiritually. And the other, and I also wanted to, sh which is 
kind of obvious in their body language and also where they're looking. Uh, they're all together, but they're all separate. They're all in their own worlds, which I guess uh, which we all are anyway. And this is my um, um, my friend Bill, and um, Bill said uh, to me, and, and this is a, what I was talking about before. I didn't want I wanted to do this image of a man who. It's important for him to, to hunt for, for whatever reason. He, see, he sees it as a spiritual pursuit. So I didn't want to do a pro-hunting drawing and I didn't want to do an anti-hunting drawing. And it kind of worked out in that hunters like the piece and people that don't hunt don't particularly like the piece. And, and, and Bill said to me, well, you know, if a hunter sees this, he'll see that I took an ax and, and uh, used it to break open the ribs of the deer and they'll, they'll, they'll know I did like an extra thing. So, um, uh, and then the other thing I did with this piece, I said, Bill, um, and, and what's funny is that Bill hunts, but his family hate hunting, so they won't eat anything he kills. <laughs> so it's, it's a lonely pursuit. Um, but I said, Bill, hold the gun, and it's his father's gun, it's not the gun that he shot the deer with. And, and one thing that, if you look at the drawing, um, I, I don't just portray reality, I kind of, I, I, I play with it, toy with it. Um, if this was, a, say, a more realistic drawing, he wouldn't be in his hunting regalia uh, in, his, in his $300 carbon-lined boots. Uh, he would be in, you know, uh, junky clothes with a knife in his hand and a bucket of uh, guts. So, um, so I, I, I kind of combine things and, uh, and for, for the drama of the image. And in this piece, I said, Bill, hold the gun like you're just going to raise and shoot me. So it just, it's one simple gesture and he can kill you, you know, in the drawing. So when you see the drawing, he just raises it up and, and it's right on you. And I will talk maybe for a couple more minutes because this is moving. This this piece. Um, this is in the show. Okay, this is in the show. Um, this is called. Uh, you might recognize the guy in the middle there. Um, it's called the artist family. We have to move. And Alana's pregnant. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. It, it's a little dark in this, but Alana's pregnant with uh, my the, my future daughter Sterling. She's in her belly. And then um, that's Ruby next to me. And then next to her, um, Bill, the guy with, who kills deer, he took the photos. So his daughter was over. So I, I, I actually kind of needed her to crowd the image. And um, um, she happened to be there. And she was in this very beautiful pose. So I put her in the drawing. Um, but we haven't moved. So <laughs> and we, had, we still have to move. Like our apartment's ridiculously small, and I, I work in the bedroom, so this is our living room, which is the bed. And um, um, and I wanted to do a drawing. Um, the, the the primary fear, um, I think, with with most people is that when when you're going to have a baby and the wife's pregnant, of course, would be the health of the child, and uh, obviously that is scary. Uh, you, you you want a healthy child. And then, uh, and, uh, kind of immediately after that, is uh, uh, can I afford this and, and money? And uh, it's uh, I, I don't think I'm stretching the truth here if I say art's a difficult uh, career to to pursue. So, um, so that's that's what I wanted to tell with uh, my body language and my expression. And. These are two of Anita's children. Uh, this is set in Lawrence, Kansas. All from that same shoot. I went down there, let's say, four years ago. I can't remember exactly. Um, a smaller piece. I've done some smaller drawings. This is the only small piece in the... In the it's about this size. And um, it's called Sarah and Brittany with a barnyard cat. And I made it like one of the cats from the, that barn snuck in the house, which they do. And so it's a scraggly, scary cat. Um, but Sarah and Brittany, um, this is, 
the, the, the narrative's not really as complex. It's, it's actually a section of a bigger drawing, which may be here. Let me, there we go. Um, and in this drawing, um, and this will be the final drawing I, I discussed, um, this is not in the show. This, this was sold to a collector in Chicago. Um, in this drawing, this is uh, uh, Dinah, who's my cousin in the middle, Dinah and Doyle at home with Anita's children. So when Anita lost her children and they were going to be taken away to uh, place permanently into foster homes and different things, um, they originally went to Anita's mom's, but they, had, they, they came to Dinah and Doyle's house. And Doyle built on rooms onto this farmhouse. And, and so um, uh, I wanted to tell that story in this drawing. And one of my cousins pointed out, uh, I love critiques, and one of my cousins pointed out that um, the children are kind of facing the light and Dinah and Doyle are, are kind of more in darkness. So I took that and ran with it. And, uh, um, and so in this drawing, you have these three children that are facing the window, that are facing the, the light and facing their futures. Um, and they're young, and then Dinah and Doyle are halfway through their lives, or more. And so I actually took their clothing and darkened it from what it was, and, and, and really worked with that theme. Um, and then there's many other themes, but, um, and there's that same barnyard cat that snuck into this drawing. So, um, so I'll end with that. Um, I hope you uh, um, enjoy the show. And thanks for everyone, everyone for coming. It's awesome that there's so many people here. I love that. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, I'll open it up for questions, but not for too long because um, I've talked for a while. If anyone has any questions, so. And if we don't, that's fine, then we'll, we'll let the party begin.